Hello everybody that is here, welcome to my episode 4 searching for a perfect laptop and today I will be reviewing not one but two laptops and those will be Lenovo ThinkPad T-Series I have a new 460 and new 560 and the reason I am reviewing both simultaneously that the difference between those units is very very little so when you show and know the characteristics of one you pretty much can be talking the same stuff about the bigger version or smaller version depends which one you're talking about internals of both units absolutely identical and the only difference between those two is the size of the screen so i can give you this advice straight from the very beginning if you're searching for one unit or other, your selection will be boiled to the weight of the unit because the bigger one, a little bit more weight. And if you really need a bigger screen or you want something more subcompact. And that will be give you pretty much the same laptop, just in two different sizes. This was pretty interesting for me to look in T-Series for the reason that when I was reviewing ThinkPad P50, which is absolutely ultra high-end type of workstation laptops with tons of bells and whistles, but it also comes to the price. And if you remember, it was almost $4,000 Canadian. Those ones, they cost actually pretty much the same. Doesn't matter which size of the screen you get. This is half price. So what the half money gives you? Well, there's a lot of compromises comes from the technical standpoint. When you think about value, the laptop make a lot of sense. But when you think in terms of components level and for the somebody who is a computer enthusiast like am I, that became a little bit less exciting. Let me elaborate a little bit. I'm not very familiar with the Lenovo lineup, but I have a very strong feeling that both 550 and 450 units are slightly upgraded version of the previous models, which I believe would be probably 460 and uh, um, maybe 360, something like this. You can look it up yourself to if uh, and correct me if needed. But the thing is, what they took, they took the previous generation laptop and upgraded to the latest sixth generation CPU. Laptop continue to exhibit. 1080p display on both units. There are no USB type C type of connectivity whatsoever. So all you get is a USB type 3. You have your SD reading card, you have HDMI, which I believe on all the unit was just like something like VGA output or something like that. So now we have HDMI, but overall I would say that I would expect USB type C type connectivity from any new model that I would consider to buy. And the reason for that, that I found that it's very convenient to use a laptop with external components such as a full-size keyboard, proper mouse, and the proper size of monitor bigger than the one you have with a laptop. For that reason, I'm personally always use something like this. So this is a dock installation from Lenovo. Pretty pricey one and especially keep in mind that if you're moving between let's say two locations, in my particular case I'm working here in the office and I work long hours at home pretty much too. So I usually buy two of those. Those ones almost 400 bucks Canadian and so this will be at a hefty price to the cost of the ownership of the laptop you're buying. The same time from my previous experience and those of you who saw my video about Dell unit which has USB Type-C connector and USB Type-C adapter, this little thing that costs you four times less, it's about $70 versus almost 400 here, you get the same bells and whistles. You have Ethernet going to the same port, uh, the same adapter that connect to a single port. You have your monitor attached to it, you have uh, your USB devices like keyboard and mouse attached to it, and everything works absolutely fine for the fraction of the cost. For this reason, while I was using such thing like this docking station for very long time, probably more than 10 years, and I absolutely love this type of setup because you just plug your laptop and 
how your setup is works. You don't need to fiddle with any tables. But if you have a very cheap device with only one port that you need connect to the side of the laptop, I think it makes sense to use it, especially as performance absolutely the same. Well, this could be still opportunities when I think that this type of uh, Docking station would still make sense because as you can see the the number of ports on the back of the station absolutely normal. We have like five USB, uh, two HDMI, display port, uh, regular VGA port, uh, DVI port, Ethernet, right? So it's like just one long line of port. Maybe if you work in some sort of a scientific environment or any other engineering, name it, you really have to take advantage of all this line of ports, maybe it makes sense. For the guy who using a little bit more down to earth setup, you just need external monitor, mouse and keyboard, that became a little bit overkill for the price you have to pay for it. In the past it was worth it because it was the only uh, alternative. Now there's other alternatives and unfortunately it's not utilizable for this type of laptop. For that reason, I feel that going with uh, this particular unit would be a little bit of buying like yesterday tech. Alrighty, for those of you who didn't left after such beginning of the video, I would like to spell a little bit more details about those two laptops. I already said that both laptops have the same uh, 1080p type of display. One is a little bit smaller, another one a little bit bigger if you take advantage, advantage of such laptop. Brightness was very good, the matte of the screen works also pretty well for outside, so I usually dislike type of laptop that has very glossy surface because it's very hard to work when you're on the go in a, in a train or bus or just want to enjoy some work a little bit outside in the summertime. So those laptops doesn't have problem with the screen. The only problem here is that if you're still okay with 1080p when everybody going and pushing 4K. I'm basically not sure if I really need the 4K screen on a laptop because gaming on a laptop is still a little bit of a pipe dream and especially if you don't even have any discrete graphic options. Neither of those laptops has that option. So you have to go to build in HD graphics. Those pretty weak, you can, maybe you can do some simple stuff like Minesweeper, but any serious game, I don't think it's a good idea to run on this kind of unit. This is laptop to do actual work, not for your leisure time. So even if you try to run some sort of graphical test, you will get a really funny result. I try Unigen Valley on the smaller unit and it was very interesting to watch it because it couldn't even draw properly all the stuff. All you see a bunch of poly polygons and it was really cool to watch. I probably ran this like five times straight <laughs> for, the, for the test just to watch how it looks. So it was very interesting. But nevertheless, so both screens 1080p, you choose whatever the size of it. Also screen determines what kind of keyboard layout you get. So you have with a small laptop, obviously a small keyboard without numeric pads. Your touchpad is located in the middle of the of your keyboard. When you go to the bigger one, that's uh, visually very similar layout to P50. When we look uh, previous time, and uh, you have a, you get additionally a numeric pad because you have enough enough space here to fill it up, and your touchpad is moved a little bit to the side. I'd like to repeat again that for some weird reason I have some issues with a Lenovo touchpad as it seems. When I try any other laptops, maybe I have a little bit dry skin on my hands because I do some work around the warehouse and things like this. Um, the sensitivity of touchpad on Lenovo laptops seems a little bit suffering when you really have a dry hands. If you wet your hands a little bit it's actually worked much better. So there's a, the, whatever they're using, the, it's, it has a little bit of issue with me particularly. Um, and I don't know, maybe it will affect you, maybe not, but I found that it's a little bit annoying that when you have, again, dry hands, the sensitivity of the screen a little bit kind of hard. So to overcome it, you actually need physically press a little bit harder on the surface of the touchpad and then it works okay. Another difference that I noticed between P50 and this model is that while P50 has uh, five buttons on the touch port, this one has a uh, physical buttons on the top. So, but on the bottom, instead of physical buttons, you actually can press on the touchpad itself. 
I'm personally always prefer physical buttons, so for me it's a little bit disadvantage. Also, for most people, probably it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. The good thing is that both laptops has a backlit keyboard. It's very useful. I don't think you, anybody would even consider to buy a keyboard without backlit function because nowadays we work almost non-stop so it's a good chance that you have to do some quick email check or something in a, in the evening in a dark environment and obviously when you see the keys it's much better to do so the response of the keys and everything was absolutely the same as the p50 um, i would say that keyboards on thinkpad laptops probably one of the best in the industry and while for example, I really like a keyboard on the Latitude laptop I just reviewed a couple of weeks ago. This keyboard would be one of the top keyboards you can get. So there's absolutely no complaints there. So if you do a lot of typing, I think this is one of the good units. That's for sure. I already spoke a little bit about um, ports. They're very much identical. You just need to flip laptops kind of upside down and you will see that you have like two USB ports here and uh, you have a um, similar the same USB port on the other side with display port on the other side you have uh, another USB connector. So both units basically exploit exactly the same thing and um, even the bottom itself you can see nothing except just connector for your docking station and exactly the same type of battery. I was a little bit surprised first to it when sort of like, listen, you kind of have a bigger laptop, so you're supposed to have a bigger battery. But later in the day, I think I found the answer for that, what's going on with this, those laptops. There's something that I never saw before on any unit I had the chance to work so far. Both laptops has a dual battery system. I don't know if you guys saw anything like this before, I personally, never experienced anything like this. First of all, you have the, this battery. And uh, so you can remove it the same way as you remove it to any laptop. And surprise, surprise, if we open a laptop, somehow it still works. This was really puzzling for me. I was like, what? What's going on here? And the answer came to me when I decided to check the ways how you can upgrade laptop because the options for the Lenovo laptops are absolutely outrageous. This laptop can cost you in initial configuration $1,200 Canadian. With my configuration, it became $2,000 Canadian. All I did is upgraded a little bit of CPU, which is you cannot avoid, but it was only $90 plus. But it came standard with four gigabyte RAM. And as soon as I add eight gigabytes as I to match my configuration, that adds another 130 bucks, which I think totally overpriced. And when I change from 500 gigabyte HDD drive to 256 SSD, then it's at whopping 300 bucks. So definitely not worth the upgrade. And I think that anybody who is searching for a laptop like this, like T460 or 560, would definitely think, hey, what about I buy the cheapest version and I will upgrade it. Well, there's some better news than on P50. P50 was so super limited. It's just unbelievable. This one a little bit better. This will be the first hardest that you have to overcome. First of all, make sure you switch your laptop completely because it has a secondary battery. Don't try to disassemble while it's still running. So press your button, kill the laptop 100%. Then you take a bunch of screws, nothing will come out. This will can be a little bit confusing for you. So what you have to do is a workout with a flat screwdriver very carefully and unclick I don't know, like 50 latches at least. This thing to disassemble it, or that thing, even more, is really pain in the butt. But you can do it. It's not like difficult, but this can be a little bit intimidating. Anyway, so when you pop up about 50 of clips, then the panel get out. And what you will see inside? Inside you will see one slot for SSD or hard drive. There are no M.2 
options whatsoever. Something that you would also accept on any laptop that released nowadays. But okay, it's a not expensive laptop, so one SSD form factor is big, still okay. So you can replace that hard drive without much trouble. It already would have the caddy that you need to, so you just take cheap $500 hard drive that is a minimum cost option and you put whatever humongous SSD you want and you have a great improvement in your uh, storage capacity and performance right away with much less money that you can get directly from your Lenovo shop. But remember, if you got any trouble, you have to repeat the whole process, put the hard drive back before you do any error or anything like this. Secondly, you can easily replace your memory. There's a two slots readily available just right under the cover. No problem whatsoever. Take your 4 gig RAM, put whatever you need, 16 or whatever, and you get your upgrade. So I would strongly recommend to skip on buying expensive options here if you buy this laptop for yourself. If your company obviously buy everything standardized so you don't need have any problems with Lenovo or the servicing for your fleet of laptops. Single buyer can play around. Absolutely same story with, um, with a bigger unit. You just need to make work out more clips than the little one, but it has absolutely identical configuration inside. There are no additional options, nothing like this. So it's again, I would like, I repeat it probably three times by now, but laptops so much twin brothers, except one of the smaller, one of the bigger. So you don't need to sweat too much selecting those, except decide weight and size of the screen that all you need to think of when you select between those two. So here we go. Very short review. I hope it helped you to decide about this unit. I can't say that it is a bad laptop. It's very solidly built. It feels good, it has excellent keyboard, it, ha it can do everything that you need for a simple office task or for the study, and it uh, wouldn't perform any less than any other more fancy laptops. For me, as a computer enthusiast who wants the latest and greatest, I might still want to look on laptops that has a 4K display, even though I don't need it, and something that has USB Type-C, M.2 options and things like this, the whole new shebang that I don't feel kind of uncomfortable to buying yesterday tech. I will continue to search for laptop for now. My still favorite, this little Latitude 7000 that is too little for my needs, but it's so cute. But for for the, those two, that's probably not my choice just because I want something a little bit more fresh on the technology side. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all your support, your likes and your comments. And I will be coming more with a couple more units that I'm still working, trying to get. I asking all my friends to loan me a laptop at this point. So we will see what I can source next. And that will be a surprise. I don't telling it right now. Thank you very much and see you soon.